welcome back to Catholic Mom and Daughter. I'm Kate, the daughter, and today we're going to be talking about patron saints. So I think 2020 was definitely a lot more than we all had bargained for. And so going into 2021, it can be a good idea to pick a saint for the year to be your special friend and helper. Today, we're going to talk about where the tradition of patron saints started, how you can choose your saint, and then what you can do with your saint throughout the year. So let's get started. So you might be wondering, why do I need a patron saint? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever asked a friend to pray for you? If you have, then know that patron saints work the same way. A patron saint is just a powerful friend in heaven who is praying for you. But the saints can do a lot more for us than that. They can give us good examples of how to live our lives, and they can help us grow in different virtues like charity and courage and generosity. So think of a patron saint as a super support system in heaven, and you can't go wrong with that. All right, so how did the tradition of having a patron saint even get started? Well, it goes all the way back to the Roman Empire in the very early days of legal Christianity. The people were building churches on the grave sites of the martyrs, and that martyr became the patron of the church and of the people who attended that church. So if you were going to St. Peter's Basilica, St. Peter would be your special patron and you would know that he was praying for you in heaven. And this tradition has continued down to this day. A lot of our churches are named after different saints. People name their kids after saints, or some families even have a particular saint that they call on in hard times. We obviously pick confirmation saints as well. So there's a lot of grounding for this tradition of patron saints. It goes back really far into history. So now let's move on and talk about how do you choose your patron saint. Okay, so how do you pick a patron saint? Well, the first thing to know is that many times you don't pick the saint, the saint picks you, which is interesting to think about. How does a saint pick you? Well, it might happen this way. Maybe you start hearing the name of a certain saint on TV and on the radio, or you go to church and the priest mentions the name of that saint during mass. Or maybe a friend randomly talks to you about that saint, or you go into a bookstore and there, sure enough, there is a book about the saint. You almost might feel like the saint is stalking me. If that happens to you, that's a clear sign that a saint has taken an interest in you and wants to befriend you. So that saint would be an excellent pick to be your patron saint of the year. But say that that doesn't happen to you, how do you find a patron saint? Well, you might have to pick one at random, which is what my family does every year on New Year's Day. We use the Saint's Name Generator created by Jennifer Fulweiler, and we'll link that website down below for you. It's really easy to use. You just bring up the website, pray to the Holy Spirit for guidance, and then you hit the button that says, find me a saint, and then voila, you have a patron saint for the year. So I always think it's fun when I get a saint that maybe I don't know a lot about or maybe one I haven't even heard of before because it's a great opportunity to make a new friend. And there are other options out there as well. You could choose a saint who shares your profession. You know, if you're an accountant, you could choose St. Matthew, or you could choose a saint who shares a love of your hobbies. Like if you like to read, you could choose St. Jerome. You could also take saints' names and just put them into a hat, shake it up and draw one out. That's kind of similar to what the apostles did when they needed to find a replacement for Judas. They didn't actually use a hat, but they prayed about it and then they cast lots and it fell to St. Matthias who became Judas's replacement. You could also take a book of the saints and just open it to your random page and see which saint that is and have them as your patron. There are also places online where you can take a quiz and they match your personality with the personality of a saint so you could find your patron saint that way. So it's really fun to see who you match with. So now that you have your saint, what are you going to do with that saint? Well, the first thing is to get to know the saint. You can easily and quickly look up a biography about your saint online, or you can get a book about your saint, either from the church library, a Catholic bookstore, sometimes even the public libraries will have books about the saints. If your saint has any special prayers or novenas, get familiar with those and pray them. And also it's good to find a picture of your saint that you can have around just to remind 
remind you that you do have a patron saint. If your saint is famous or well-known, then you can have an easy time. You can find holy cards or pictures online. That's not a problem. If you have a more obscure saint, say your saint is Leonides of Alexandria, harder to find a picture of him, but look on Etsy because a lot of the artists there do make pictures of less well-known saints. And sometimes they will even do a special you know, picture for you on request. So that's a really good resource. If your saint wrote any books then you definitely want to read them and it's always fun to know your saint's feast day and have some type of party or celebration on that day. But the most important thing throughout the year is just to keep talking to your saint, praying to your saint, asking that saint to help you. Because remember, that saint most likely chose you. So yes, you can and should take your problems straight to Jesus. That's always a good thing to do. But when times are hard, isn't it nice to know that you have a lot of people praying for you? And if one of those people just happens to be a saint in heaven who sees Jesus every day, so much the better. You can't go wrong with that. That is very comforting and very helpful. So the last thing we wanted to talk about with patron saints is about something that Jesus said to St. Gertrude. She was a mystic in the 1200s and he told her that the more you pray for someone, the happier they will become. So just think about that. You have your patron saint praying for you in heaven so you can know that that's going to add some happiness to your life. And on the flip side, you can also choose someone in your life to pray for, kind of become that person's patron for the year and continue to pray for them and make sacrifices for them. And this doesn't have to be a big deal. They don't even have to know about it. And a great prayer to use to help that person is, Jesus, make so-and-so, whoever your person is, happy in this life and the next. And so you know that you're helping them with your prayers and also making them happier. All right, so there you have it. Ways that you can pick a patron saint, why you want one, what you can do with them. Now we have not picked our saints for the year yet. We will do that on New Year's Day. And we'll update the description box and tell you who we got. But if you are picking a saint or if you've already picked one, make sure to leave us a comment and tell us who you got because we always like to know who other people got. That's kind of fun to see who is your patron saint for the year. So here's hoping that 2021 will be a little bit easier with the help of some powerful friends in heaven. We're wishing you a happy new year and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.